Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will be doing rock, paper, scissors with JavaScript. It's going to be a lot of JavaScript. This is what the final result will look like. Doesn't look like much. However, it's going to be played in the console. So I have a shortcut right here, or you could just open up the console other ways. If you're on Windows, Control Shift J, press start game. It's going to ask us for an input. So let's say rock and it's going to play around. We chose rock, the computer chose paper, the computer won that round. So let's play another one. Let's choose paper this time. We chose paper. The computer chose paper. It was a tie. Let's do scissors. Also works. They chose the same as us again. It goes up to five rounds, but we also have some validation here. So if I type rock in incorrectly, it's going to ask me to type it in with correct spelling. Or if I type rocks, it still won't work. If I try to cancel, it's not going to work. It's not going to it's going to keep going until we get the input correctly. And then after five rounds, it's going to show us how many times we won, how many times the computer won, and how many ties we had. After the game's played, we also see this, play new game. You click on it, restarts the game. It does keep track of how many wins we've had so far. So we're going to learn a lot of JavaScript. This is the HTML right here. It's not very much, but the main JavaScript, as you can see, there will be a little bit more, about 80 lines of code. Barely any CSS, so we're going to learn a lot of cool JavaScript methods. We're going to learn if checks, while loops, for loops. We're going to learn functions, how to pass arguments in as parameters. We're going to learn a few array methods, what arrays are, and then how to filter over them, how to loop over them. We are going to learn a little bit about variables as well. So we're going to learn a lot of cool basics. Hopefully you guys can follow along, learn a few things. I really enjoy JavaScript. I really enjoyed this project. So see how you guys do. Hey everyone, as future me hopefully said and showed, we'll be doing rock, paper, scissors today with the Odin project. Let's open that up in the browser. Got it pulled up right here. I also already created a directory and everything on my computer. So I just have an index file right here. Let's look at the assignment requirements. Create a blank HTML document with a script tag. Hint, it is best practice to link to an external JS file. We will be doing that. We are going to link to an external JS file. Personally, I don't like to type JavaScript inside of an HTML document. I like to separate everything out to where it should be. This game is going to be played completely from the console, so don't worry about putting anything else in there. We're going to play against the computer. They're going to randomly select from rock, paper, or scissors. We're going to write a function that plays a single round. We're going to look at the very end. We're going to not do this right here. We're going to just do it how we want to do it a little bit. I love JavaScript. I'm excited to do this project, guys. Let's open up our code. Create a new file. We're going to call this main.js. But we're going to name our JavaScript file. It's really easy to link to it. There's only one thing you have to keep in mind. You always want to have the JavaScript be the last file that your HTML reads. If you have HTML elements that your JavaScript is going to be modifying, you want to make sure that those load before the JavaScript tries to mess with them. If they don't exist and the JavaScript tries to mess with them, then JavaScript's going to crash because it doesn't see that they exist. So it's best practice. You could just do it at the bottom of the body tag or below it. Just do script. And we're going to say source src is equal to main.js, like that. If for some reason you wanted to put it before your HTML, like up here, you would say script defer, like that, source. So your HTML or the browser, when it's loading this HTML document, sees we have a script tag, but it's deferred. So it's going to wait until the very end to run that. I'm just going to move this down here. The defer doesn't matter at this point, but we'll get rid of it. Now let's make just a tiny bit of HTML. Let's create a div dot flex container. And I have an H1 tag, rock, paper, scissors, like that. And we're just going to keep it like that for now. Okay, main.js. We want a function called game. This is going to play the game. 
we want to play five rounds as well. Function called play round. Going to take in player selection and computer selection. It's taking these two things in as parameters. So this is parameter one, this is parameter two. And if I said down here, if I said const player selection, I could name this whatever I want. I could say player select, or player choice, it's equal to rock, const computer comp. I'm just going to call it like this. I'm just trying to make a point right here. This is equal to paper. And then I said play round player choice comp this is going to do is take these two this is an argument right here and this is an argument it's passing them in as parameters so we wanted to say console.log player selection right here it's going to console log rock as this is the parameter this is an argument this is a variable we're passing in as an argument into a function function takes that argument and now it's a parameter that syntax or that terminology doesn't necessarily matter too much just nice to learn if so that if other people are talking about it, it makes sense before we go too much farther we're going to create a prettier file so do dot prettier rc like that we're going to save i went over the instructions on how to set this up in a previous video uh here's a card for that uh, Corner, I think. So now, if we save, prettier just formatted our our code a little bit better. We don't want any of this though. Okay, play round. What we want to do here is we don't actually even want to take these in as parameters. Const player selection. Equal to we're going to define a function right here. So function player choice. function computer choice we're going to set up what's called a global variable up here const choices is equal to it's going to be an array an array is just pretty much just a list of elements they could be variables they could be numbers they could be strings they could be functions they could be objects it's just a list of things separated by commas so We'll just keep this simple we're going to do rock we're going to keep everything lowercase so either we want to do all lowercase or all capitalized we don't want to have to keep changing these variables to have upper uppercase first letter or or anything like that let's just keep everything lowercase like this okay let's work on the computer selection first that's really easy we're going to do return i'm going to say choices going to do brackets so if we said choice is zero it's going to return this element right here so arrays work differently than how you would intuitively think about them index of zero is the first thing in here so index of one index of two so if i said index choices with an index of zero it's going to pull out rock if i said two pull out scissors if i said choices three it would return negative one or null it just doesn't exist so instead of that we're going to do math capital math capital m math dot floor what floor does is puzzles right here it takes an integer and rounds it down so if we had 1.99 it would give back one just one if we had 2.5 it would return us two if we had 0.5 six we would return zero so we want to do that i'll show you why in just a second we're going to say math dot random times choices dot length so how this so this is going to randomly get one of these elements out of this array for us how it does that is math random is going to get us a number between zero and one it's never going to be one it's always going to be less than one so the highest it could be is 0.9999 lowest it could be a zero 
So it's going to grab some random decimal less than one times it by choices.length, which is three. There's three elements in here. That's why index and, and length can get a little bit tricky. The max index of this array is two, but the length is three. So there's three elements in here, so its length is three. So this is always going to be three. We don't even have to put choices.length. We could say times three. Doesn't matter. Choices.length in this game is always going to be three. So it's going to have a random decimal times by three. So this expression right here could be any number between zero and point, or 2.9999. The highest it could ever be is 2.9999 because it's going to be three times any, something less than one. So math.floor is going to round that down. So even if it is 2.9999, it's going to round down to two, which is, as I said, the highest index that we could ever have out of here. So if it was 2.9999, this would turn scissors. Otherwise, it's going to turn paper. If, if it rounds down to one, or if it rounds down to zero, it's going to give us rock. Okay, player choice. Fonts, computer selection. Okay, we're going to work on the player selection and the player choice in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.